Hello and welcome to my live painting demo. I um, I'm hope that I'm live. It's uh, it's a little after nine o'clock and I um, have to do a little test here because I've been having a very um, poor quality stream. It's giving me some errors so that's why I haven't jumped on right away to see if I could fix it. Um, it's probably that I have uh, a couple of um, kids in my household trying to watch movies at the same time but um, uh, it looks like it's working so I'm just going to jump in straight ahead. Um, so this is a painting I'm doing of uh, Rue Penelope. I painted her before and um, it, it's uh, a photo taken by her mom Teresa Holden and um, so mom's photographer, the daughter's a model and um, they take some really great pictures together and I like this particular one to do a painting of. Hold on, a little bit of water first before I dive in. Um, it looks like it's um, showing up okay. If, um, if anyone is watching and they're having any problems with the sound, please let me know and I can see if I can adjust it. Otherwise, um, I will just um, move right on ahead. I did a little um, palette demo on my Instagram channel before I started and I added white just to all my colors so that you could see the the um, tinted version of all those colors across the spectrum to see how um, I could use all of those. I'm not sure that's what I'm going to use to start off with. I'm just going to maybe get a little bit of a, a reddish gray going and um, thinned out a little bit and start painting with that. So just to get a little bit, I'm going to get a bunch of measurements going to kind of get a feel of where everything is. That just will take a minute, but I find if I do that part first, then the whole thing goes uh, quite a bit better. Just, and I have, I'm working on a um, 9 by 12 panel, and the um, the photo that I have on my computer monitor is also 9 by 12 so I can it's just a a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of measurement and so that makes life easy I don't have to do any maths or anything difficult um, as I'm painting just um, just I can measure the the image on this computer monitor and then I can measure um, on my panel and then just put it right down so that's about there. Quick measurement. That looks about right. I find if I do a lot of measuring in the beginning, then the rest um, of it can go pretty quickly. Um, I do trust my drawing skills, but often if I draw without measuring, I find that, it, that a lot of it is pretty far off. Like I just put in that chin line. I'm sure that I'm going to have to redraw that once I measure measure from the top. It's actually a little bit lower here. Just putting it in lightly. I can change it very easily. Um, just want to get the center line of her chin. Looks like about here. If I think about her face, um, the center line moves up through here to the top of her forehead, which is um, right about there. So that's where the center line ends. And then I can think about the her eye line it comes a little bit of, uh, below the tip of that hat. We're looking a little bit up. Um, so we're a little bit below her. Um, so her eyes, let me get the her, her um, the bridge of her nose is very soft. I mean, there isn't kind of a hard edge there to figure out where it comes in, but I can see sort of one edge of her nose is there, and then the other edge here, just sort of where her her eye socket starts. And her eyes are kind of in a curve that's moving back this way. Her ear is hidden, but it's pretty far down here. So this really gets a sense that the head is tilting back and then the jaw there. And then let's put in the base of the nose and where her nostrils are. 
<clears throat> I hope this feed is um, working. I haven't had anyone say that they're um, watching yet, although it says that there's nine people here. So if you're here, just give me a shout out. Let me know that you're that you're watching, that you're getting, um, that this is playing. Uh, I know that there's like almost a minute delay um, between what I'm saying and when it actually, when you guys hear it. So even though I'm asking you now, you won't be hearing it until a minute later. So I'm just going to be patient with that one and just hope that it's working. I'm going to just indicate where her nostrils are a little bit lightly, just to kind of get a sense of the tip of her nose. Not using, putting a whole lot of paint down, but let's just get a little bit of that brownish um, color that's coming in right at the top of her nose here. Just throw that in a little bit, just to get kind of start to get an idea of the color. And then her lips, I can use some of that tint that I made uh, for the demo. Something like that. And her lips get pulled out and then down a little bit. So we have that same kind of curve line coming down to get a sense of her, the fact that, um, well, actually, I want to be going the other way. The curve should be going this way. Sorry. Um, really confusing. But if you think about this as a cylinder that's tilted a little bit, um, the problem is this perspective, it's not tilted so much. It's more that her whole head is at an angle, which may, conceptually makes it a little bit hard to judge um, the direction that it's pointing in. Okay, so, um, oh, now I'm starting to see people. Uh, looks like sounds all good. Thank you, Steve, and welcome, Angela. All is good. Um, Bad Habit says, hi, y'all. Brian from North Carolina here. Um, welcome. Brett says, watching. Aline says, live feed is good. Watching from San Francisco Bay Area here. Um, welcome. Um, and N. B. All good. Thumbs up. Michael. Looks good. Sounds good. Um, Elaine, uh, Ele Eline Sun says, have you tried streaming on Twitch? It's where I stream painting and there are usually more viewers and easier interaction. There's only about 10 to 15 seconds delay, I think. Um, haven't tried Twitch yet. Maybe I'll try to do a, a a simulcast of Twitch and YouTube. I'm really kind of married to YouTube at this point since I'm trying to build my subs subscribership here. Um, so it takes uh, a little bit of time. I've been about a year and a half um, doing these painting demos, so um, or a little bit over a year, I should say. And so I'm gonna, I've improved the Improve the technology a little bit in the last um, few months by getting um, webcams instead of just using my phone, and that has really helped quite a bit. It's only tonight I've had a, a little bit of problem with uh, with the connection speed, and it's even though I can see in my um, in my OBS software it says it has a, a good connection rate and no drop frames, it's still um, I still got a warning from um, YouTube. So. A little bit about my color right there. I would have been using cranacridone red in the lips mixed with a little bit of white. And then I'm going to go in with some pure um, alizarin crimson. I need to remeasure this again to make sure it is in the right place. And this was uh, what I like to use in, this, in the division between lips usually gives me, um, let me measure that again right from the center line. That's in the right place. Um, but I do need to pull her cheek in just a little bit. So it's just a little bit tighter here. And I'm going to get a measurement of her cheek. It says it's out further, but that's okay. It's somewhere in there. By the end of the evening, I'll have it in the right place. I'm just for fun, for giggles, I'm going to throw in, I see a little bit of green in her face. And I'm just going to start off by throwing some of that in just so. Um, kind of as a base in there and let me get figure out where her eyes are because that's that's usually where I get all messed up is the eyes spend a lot of time 
uh, correcting moving eyes around. If I can get and get the measurement of them from the beginning, let's get a little. Keep this kind of washy. Not don't have to commit so hard yet. Got her iris there, and she's looking a little bit up. And then the other eye is like pretty far over visually. Um, generally you want kind of an eye length between the eyes um, because one of her eyes is sort of so far curved around her face it's a little bit further out so that eye really starts around here a little bit and I need to get her hat line and then I want to make sure that I'm going darker in her forehead than anywhere else in her face Aline, Aline also says, I used to work in live streaming for seven years and have helped a lot of people set up, set their streams up. Let me know if you ever need help optimizing your settings and hardware. Love your streams. Oh, thank you. That's a great offer because when you start talking about things like bit rates and, um, and there were some other settings on there that was like... Uh, placebo fast or slow I don't even know what that was but it um, started talking about CPU space and I, you know, I don't even know what that means in terms of a live stream so um, some of that would be very helpful I've taken a good stab at um, the setup and got it kind of working but I'm not 100% sure it's optimized um, Israel Ma Macias says hi there from Mexico or Hopefully, I don't know if that's a, actually a Spanish name or not, if it's pronounced that way, or um, maybe it isn't. But anyway, welcome is uh, Israel from Mexico. And um, okay, so I stopped painting there for a minute. So um, I do know I want to be a light pink underneath her nose. So um, kind of start to indicate that a little bit. Um, let's throw that nostril in again. Something like that. I may have to move that over a little bit, but it looks kind of right. Yeah, that's right from that side and needs to be lower. Let's let me check some of these other measurements to make sure I don't have a few things too high. That eye is in the right place. So that nostril, let's measure again is too high that's good to know okay so I'll just do exactly the same thing but just a little bit lower and I can take a little bit of white and just um, disappear the first the first stab okay that's good and then the lips actually that distance between her nose and her lips is kind of tight and this is What's so hard about painting kids um, is some of those distances are um, are a lot smaller than you would think, and so it's easy to kind of get them wrong, um, to guess wrong, I should say. Often I paint it in, and then I change it 30 times, so it's never right the first time anyway. Just going to put in a little bit of her cheek color sure I keep it uh, light enough throwing a little bit of yellows and greens in here being a little bit non-committal right now just trying to get the feel of where things are um, I can be a lot braver as I as I move along in the painting and let's see we got the center line of her mouth something like that Let's move up a little bit higher on here. And I'm going to move that center line up just a little bit here. Okay, so we have this sort of triangle shape here, the tip of her nose, and then it kind of swoops up. Have raised eyebrows up here. 
here. A nice generous curve here. And the other eyebrow starts to come in here. And then we got that cut off by your hair. Okay. So all so far all looks good. Again, I want to keep that forehead fairly dark, kind of in the red purple family there. Throw in a little bit of purple. And her eyes opened a little bit more than what I have it. So that's where her eyelashes are. She's got her upper eyelid. And I want to really um, exaggerate the blue color in her eyes. If um, in the photo, the color really doesn't read that well. And then I want to throw in a grayish blue for the white of her eye. And I really want to keep the white of the eye kind of dark because I want to be able to get the reflected light in there. And you can't get that if you start off too light. And so it really is important to show a little bit of restraint, not just go straight for white in the whites of the eyes, even though psychologically you would think it, it's white, but it's not. It's usually a gray or a bluish gray or or it may, it may have a little bit of red in it because if you want that reflection to read, I'm just going to throw a little bit down so you get an idea um, of it. It's going to be somewhere around there. So to get that sort of hint of reflection, you really need to keep everything controlled, keep it on the darker side. And we have her eyelashes kind of crisscrossing in there. Okay. I feel like I need to move the tip of her nose over just a tad. Oh, it's kind of in the right place, something. Uh, that means it's really where the hair, her reddish hair is coming in here. So I have a dark, almost black with some red thrown in there. So I'm this is where I'm using some of that alizarin permanent to keep it um, keep it dark. Trying to feel where that cheekbone is there. And she's got the side of her nose. She's got the a pretty wide area for the light side of her nose there. That's going to be mostly orange and, and white to get that color. More white than anything else. It's very little color in it. I have to go whiter. Just moving up that tip of tip of her nose a little bit. So here I'm just, you know, taking my time, being a little cautious um, with the with the paint. That's okay. I'll, I'm getting there slowly. Trying not to make a big mess of it yet. Let's get the color underneath her or above her eye. It's a little bit of orange and reds in there. Slightly lighter than the forehead and get the eyebrow much darker. I can always change that color in there, but um, try not to get too much white in it to start with. And we got a ton of blue in the underside of the hat here. Oh, went really blue. <laughs> Just going for it. I know it's not quite that bright in the photo, but sometimes those colors are really hard to get off the bat, and sometimes it's easier to go brighter and to knock them down a little bit. Can throw in a little bit of black right in here where it needs to be more kind of shadow. And this is a good time to pick my background color. I'm going to go lean blue. 
but mostly on a on the gray side and then the hair is swooping out um, she's a target okay the hair is swooping out there and um, and then the shoulder okay so I got my composition to worry about there then I got these these beautiful orange locks coming in here but she's got a dark streak of hair coming down right from underneath the hat and right along her eye and then down that way so I'm just sort of finding the the elements to help frame her face so I understand where I am and then I have a little bit of dark underneath her chin there Oop. that is not the color that I wanted so I'm just gonna paint over that with light pink <laughs> Eventually, it will come out the right color. So the swoop of her collar, something like that. So that jawline there, it's uh, slight. It's very close to horizontal. It's just moving a little bit downward this way, and then slowly up. And where where is this off? I think we need that a little bit more dimension in the hat to kind of see where we are. Have this beautiful heart design that's on here. So I'm just going to indicate where that is. And we got the red of her shirt. So this is where this uh, I have two different reds here. One's a warmer red, which is the naphthol, and then I have a cooler red, the cranacridone red, which has that very high tinting strength if I need to get some very light pinks. And just starting to indicate where that collar is. Don't have to be perfect. I'm not as critical as uh, some of the elements in the face, but um, it's good to get close to being right so if she has the right gesture. So this comes right off the page. Okay, so everything feels right. Maybe the chin's feeling a little bit pointy from, from my tastes. Um, not feeling like... Um, expression so I'm just going to try to imitate that hair that's coming through here and that's helping define her chin because these are the elements that are that are kind of dark behind her let's get the fill out her lips a little bit more Okay, let me see if you guys, uh, what have you been typing? Um, okay, this Mario's come in. Hi, I'm in Mexico too. Okay, great. Um, got our Mexican contingent tonight. Fantastic. Uh, buenas noches. Bienvenidos. Okay. So, where... Where am I off? That's often the question is, where is this thing off the most? And where can I correct it so that it gets back on track? So I feel like this eye is just over a little bit more. And again, I want to get that kind of grayish blue in the white of the eye. Let's see, I did that without measuring, so I'm going to do a little post-measuring to see if I'm in the right ballpark. It looks like her eye is too high. I don't know how, but uh, let me measure again. Yep, that's right, and it's too high it's off by quite a bit so her eye is actually 
down here. So let's just correct that while I'm here. Okay. So measurement says it's right, even though it looks wrong to me right now. So I'm just going to go with it, with what the measurement says. And fix everything else around it. So then I'm going to measure that one more time just to kind of get a better idea. And I wasn't so careful about painting her eyelash there just because just trying to get everything in the right place quickly. So we follow the line of her eye. So there. And we have a lot of light coming in underneath her, her eyebrow. Let's clear up that. A little bit of orange in that brow here. That hat comes down just a little bit lower. Okay. Okay, so not so bad. Um, let's trim her cheek a little. Give that little bit of a roundness to her cheek there. Throw in the background so I can adjust her the outline of her of her cheek there. And I'll go back and forth a little bit with the hair until it starts to feel right. So her cheek still actually comes out a little bit further here. Got some yellows going in here. This is often where I, I chintz out on the yellow a little bit. A touch of green. Okay. Don't forget those greens and blues and the flesh tones or it will never look like the person's alive. Um, those people who pre-mix their flesh tones and never put any blues or greens in it, I don't know. You're, you're starting off on the, the wrong foot a little bit when you do that because um, then you're, you're missing out on all the good stuff. Okay. Let's define the underside of her nose a little bit better. Trigo moves a little bit darker on that far edge here. So just throwing all a bunch of different colors together so I get something fairly neutral. Pull that nostril up higher uh, at a better angle. Okay. And I made the tip of her nose a little bit too high. It's something like that. She's got some nice deep red freckles there. And so now I'm starting to do my squinting, that stuff that I do to kind of see, uh, to do a quick comparison to see what's in the photo and um, compare to what's in the painting. So I can quickly see where things are off a little bit. But you have to get a little bit into the painting before you start. You can really see some of those things. It takes, it takes a little bit of patience working back and forth. Um, and now I need to push a lot darker here to get that sense that the forehead's moving um, pretty much into shadow there. Let's just push it. If I want um, a convincing form, then I really do have to get that play of light working. Okay. And we need a little bit more nose there. Okay, and I may 
have made the tip of her nose just a little bit too big, the underside of her nose, so I'm going to carve into that a little bit. and move that nostril over just a tad. Yeah. And thin up her lips a little bit. and adjust her cheek line slightly. That's something very subtle. It's going to take a lot of back and forth before I get that right. And then it turns away from us just at the end, so there's a little color and value change going on there. Lighter pink here, and then it goes darker as it moves off the edge. Okay, so really taking my time with this one, not rushing it. side. Okay, hopefully the, um, the quality of the stream is holding up. Um, from what I can tell it is. Want some orange in that other cheek. And we got quite a bit of red going here in that hair down and across. So I'm just going to go pure orange right here. Just going to really whip out the orange because there's um, no shortage of orange in the color in the photo. A little bit of darker, um, darker notes, reds and blacks. on the shape of that of her iris a little bit we want the the eyes to be convincing that's where the pupil is right there so we've got to pull up at the bottom here it's dropping a little bit too much And the corner of her eyes just a little bit lower here. So need a measurement. Yep, that's about right. little bit of light on the far side of the eye, slightly, slightly yellow, orange. Okay, 
so right now her eyes aren't really lining up so I need to do a better job of that got to pull this other eye down a little bit things are off but need to fill in get some of the larger flesh tones in here the photo is almost um, blowing out in her cheek that's near us so that's just a white with a little bit of color in it but I do need to knock back the the color that's in the panel or the white that's in the panel before I can start to see some of those um, subtle, subtle or color changes boy really can't talk tonight um, so I'm just brushing in a lot of white or some very pale color in there and then the lightest light in her face is really that lower edge of her um, jaw there and then that's against a kind of grayish violet in her neck have a, a few subtle things that are off that are kind of changing the direction of her of her head a little bit and so really want to get on top of those things before I get too much further her jawline actually drops a little bit more and then her forehead comes up a bit higher in there and that's going to make a difference in the the, what feels like is the direction of her head. I'm going to get that line of the bill of her cap and that dark note at the very end somewhere around there. Okay. Let's move this eye up a little and give her an eyelid That's going to help us out a little bit. Okay, so let me see. We have a few more people chiming in. Um, lately, I'm also working a la prima with loose undersketch. This is um, Ice Cura. Um, does it irritate you when you work with all of those unfinished areas? Well, yeah, but you can't paint everything at once, so you just have to guesstimate what the values are as you work. Um, so, um, you know, if you have a lot of um, white of the panel, then everything's going to appear much darker than it is. The, the temptation is to paint too light, and so I guard against that and I paint darker visually. Actually, I don't even think about it that much. I just um, kind of know my value ranges a lot um, better from mixing the color and so I just I I can get really close to the color that, that it's going to be in the in the finish when all the the white is removed then um, things seem to pull together pretty well. Um, so it's just a matter of practice. Mandy, yes, thanks for the stream. And Mario, how many brushes are you using? So far I've used two brushes on this painting. I don't know if you can see them. One is a is a round and the other is a bright 
and uh, or maybe that's a flat that's a bright and uh, neither of them are very big or small they're kind of medium sized um, sometimes I like to work with a lot bigger brush it keeps things loose and um, keeps me honest and keeps me away from diddling around too much with tiny little brushes which often make my paintings look um, a little stiff just kind of putting a little bit of a wash here in the neck and going to pull the red of her collar up in the edge of her lips a little that's going to take a little work to start to get the feel that these lips are um, are round and not just a flat graphic here. Partially because my poor drawing is not or out. So I'm gonna pull that in a little bit. Let's keep a little bit of that green in there. for those freckles. Just want to indicate them for right now just to kind of give myself an idea of where I am. exaggerating those colors right now. I can knock them back later, but sometimes it's helpful because then you have these interesting accents going on that you, if you just didn't put them down, you would have been too afraid to put them in later. Pull the edge of her mouth down a little bit lower. looking better. Um, how many brushes are you using? That was Mario. Uh, what is your approach with using references? I've, one way or another, I, I contact the photographer and the model. Um, only once in a while I'll do a painting where the photographer hasn't responded and I still to sort of given them a heads up that I'm using the their reference and if they fail to um, respond I just figure they're either too busy or not interested in and in, um, communicating and if they don't have that much energy to communicate they probably don't care or have the time or energy to harass um, artists that have used uh, their resources um, it's just a thing now if you go on uh, Pinterest or on Instagram you can see how often artists are using um, photographers work as reference um, the best practice is to contact the photographer and the model and um, notify them ask permission or just tell them in a DM that that you're going to be doing a painting from their photo Usually um, they don't care or they're flattered or very excited that you'll be doing a painting of them. So um, if not, there's a, tons of other reference out there to use. Um, if a photographer really is, I haven't really had a case yet where a photographer says no. So hasn't been a problem yet. So in that regard. I um, get a lot of my photos off of Sketchy, which is um, partially how the app is set up, is that 
um, people have already given artists permission to paint them. So um, a, um, getting that permission um, up front makes it a lot easier. You don't have to, to work to get it later. Okay, now I'm starting to see the color and the value changes. I need to soften up uh, colors in a few spots for it to read properly. Okay, got to pull this um, chin in a little bit. Something like that. Just sort of picking up the pace here a little bit. As I start to see where things need to be, I can just go ahead and um, be a little more forceful about it, and that will um, that will show up in your line work and your calligraphic marks if you put them down with a little a little more directly with more confidence. Then um, it will be adding a little bit more interest into the the painting because the the brushwork will be uh, kind of part of the visual language of your painting not really into hiding the brushwork i know uh, if you're going for photorealism then you kind of want the brushwork to be less uh, apparent i kind of like the brushwork and so i do everything i can to incorporate it into the finished work. And uh, yeah, Michael Weinsberg says beautiful work. Thank you. It's about uh, about an hour in. We're maybe a third of the way there, I guess. Um, I'll probably be painting on this from for somewhere between two and three hours. So let me uh, define this nostril a little bit better. I'm going to throw in some purple right here. Yep, that's feeling about right. And I want to soften that edge of the tip of the nose. Just I want to feel it a little bit more turning, coming up, and I got it changing a little bit towards orange. It's very subtle. So mostly white, a bit of yellow and orange in there. And that's defining the upper edge of that nostril. So it makes a difference where I put it. Then we got kind of a purpley, very faint mauve sort of shadow going there, helping define that upper lip. And speaking of defining that upper lip, I really have to get back in here and get some greens and oranges working here where the philtrum is. The philtrum is just a fancy word for saying that um, that channel at the top of the lips. And being a little more careful about my colors because I want the flesh tones to kind of read properly. Okay, and cleaning up a little bit on those lips here. And so we can see a little bit where that lip is turning down away from us slightly. It's got a little bit darker. And again, this give her a little more cheek here. And we got a little bit of a dark accent right underneath her chin there. So we're going to use that to really show where her chin is, where the, the structure of it is. Okay, that was a little bit needed. 
that. I may have made it, may have made her ch cheek a little bit pudgier than it is, but I know I'm pretty close here. And let's narrow her eye a little bit here. has come up right around here, a little bit higher. <clears throat> okay, got Blanche here. Welcome, Blanche. Um, I am in Stanford, uh, Virginia. I love your work. Thanks for all you do to help others. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, just got to play around a little bit with light and dark there before I get those lashes to read. Okay, work back and forth a little bit with these colors before I get the upper lip to read correctly. Okay, so Gonna carve into the lip again here with a little bit of pink, very light pink here against the upper lip. And a little bit of yellow showing up here. So where I often mess up is I'm I'm my paintings are usually starved of yellow because they're not getting enough in my paint mixture. Let's get this um, this upper edge of her nostril. I got to bring that down a bit lower and move the top edge lower too. Here we got a bit of white coming in. So just really careful adjusting these shapes. Um, make sure the anatomical structure is reading correctly. Move that eyebrow up a little. Just making these minor adjustments. So what I'm seeing in the photo, um, yeah, I'm matching better in my painting. So then getting the right expression in the likeness. And I have to be careful that I'm not skewing her face too much, if anyone knows what that is. Um, I have a tendency to skew a little bit, and sometimes I have to um, look to see what I'm doing in a mirror, because then it really shows up very quickly. Um, so I can see here I've made her hair. If I measure, I've made it turn a little bit um, further out than it really is. So like this hair is coming down here. Let's get a measurement. So that's right. And so I actually have the cheek needs to come down lower, or the jawline needs to come down here and then turn up from a lower angle. have her here and the hair in the back of her head coming in um, a little bit closer to her face. That means her collar is coming up closer to here, a little bit tighter. Still have to bring this jawline in a little bit tighter.
So just adjusting edges, moving your mouth out a little bit further. And down. Okay. So bits of little bits of adjustment until starting to get some of the angles right. Oops, sorry about that, just about my camera. So you can see lots of uh, jiggling in a second. Okay, so we have Vanessa says, I missed um, part of the beginning. Are you painting on gesso board? Yes, I'm painting on, um, these are Speedball Mona Lisa panels. They're very inexpensive on Dick Blick. Um, they do require uh, an additional pass of gesso if you're um, going to be successful on painting on them because of the, the um, the factory finish is uh, way too slick and makes it very hard to get the oil paint to stay on them. And so, um, so they're great and inexpensive, but you do have to do a little bit of work to get them to where they're um, ideal. At least for me, ideal. They just take one pass of gesso and I'm ready to go. Um, so I just have a ton of panels. I gesso them up as I as I need them. Um, so yeah, they do have kind of this very odd finish. Um, if you read reviews about them, that's usually what people say is that they're too, that they're a little bit too slick. And okay, keep on loading up white right here on the lower jaw because that's, um, that's the lightest part there. I can see light pinks coming in in here, so I need to go a little bit darker on the cheek next to it to get it to read properly. And I'm missing the the anatomy underneath her eye here, a little bit of um, a little bit of depression here underneath the eyelid comes down. That's also going to help um, her nose read. Um, more convincingly. Trying to get, not, I'm not into painting the freckles yet, but I want to start to indicate where they are. Sort of as kind of like landmarks, so I know where I am in the painting. Good. So, I'm, so there's a uh, area of the separation or lips that are uh, cleaner, brighter red. So I'm putting that in, and I've I've punched up the color intensity a little bit from the original photo. So I've taken the liberty to do that, so it gives me um, a little more closer to where I want the color of the paint to be. Um, also, safeguards um, from getting the painting coming out a little bit too muddy, um, which you can never accuse, I guess, my paintings of doing, because I usually work so hard to keep a high level of intensity in the color. <coughs> okay, getting, slowly finding that, that edge here on her, on her jaw. It's taking a while. 
and the light pink on the underside here the light reflecting up into it a little bit okay gave her a little bit too much chin but that's okay can come back and carve it back a little bit hints of light yellow coming in here So again, I'm just continually adjusting here because I can sense just it's close, but still some things are off enough that it um, doesn't feel quite right to me. So if I keep on doing that all the way through the painting, eventually I will be close to where I want it to be. Let's get the, her um, overall strap in there kind of a bluish, uh, grayish color there. And that comes really close to the edge there. Just a little bit of red showing on the outside edge. the background coming in getting a little bit of violet in that bluish color a little bit on my perspective of that shoulder and so that's not quite looking right
Okay. Just I'm gonna keep on going here. Sometimes my I'm painting, I'm forgetting that I'm doing a, a demo because I stopped talking and I'm just painting, which may help you from just watching, but I'm really um, not describing what I'm doing very well. So I'm looking for a slightly bigger um, brush to loosen me up a little bit. Um, this one's maybe a little bit, it's got a little bit of dried paint in it, so hopefully I can um, get it revived here so that it'll work. Yeah, it's a little bit too rough. Let me pick out something else. Well, here's the one I was using. It's actually about the same size, and it's... I'm just going to keep on using that one. Just want to give her a little bit more anatomy in her neck so I can start to feel where the, the forms turn. mixed with that orange, but it's the right direction. Just need it to be a little more neutral than, than I had it. loading up the white here in her jaw so I can get the feel of the side of her face a little bit better. get some of the white in in this baseball cap, so I'm reading the light blowing out on this bill. Okay, I need a much sharper edge there for the for that seam. working those values back and forth a little bit.
this is where I need almost pure orange to get close to that color of her hair. put in the indications of the metal of her buckles here. Just some landmarks to make it easy for me to see where I am. We got her other strap in somewhere around here. This is where I don't mind if it starts to get a little bit loose and lost. Some of the, what's happening in the shirt and the garment, I just need it to feel like it's a little bit more open and free. So um, how that helps give a little bit of life and drama to the painting. Got a little indication of the ear right here is about the same color as the hair so it's a little hard to get it to stand out and that is coming through the hair right here don't really see it in the photo but I can sort of put it in regardless
So I'm working really hard to try to get some of the the details that describe the direction of her head and help um, get the right gesture. It would be really easy to get a few things off right here and then have it not read right. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time going back and forth with some of the, the values, the colors, and um, the drawing until it really starts to feel right. Partly what I'm missing is some of the, the highlights in the tip of the nose. So let's see if I can throw those in. I'm leaning those a little bit on the cool side. That helps a little bit. Help describe that the form, what's going on there. exaggerating the, some of the value changes here just so I can start to see where the forms are turning. get some of those smaller forms around the mouth to read properly. To go darker there, a little bit, just a little bit of pink without going too bright.
some nice purple colors coming in underneath the eye here. Very subtle. pink coming down so we catch a little bit of a shadow from that hair that's looking about right have some of the light reflecting off the neck coming through the strands of hair there it's just a little subtle little touch going like pure yellow here on top just really trying to get the movement of the hair little bit warmer blue on the back of the head here if I'm going to get the hat, hat to read as a brighter blue. more of this background in so we can start to judge all the colors. Sorry if my board's moving around a little bit there. You can see the my board 
it's kind of falling out of the picture a little bit. So let's see if I can get a little bit more of the... Oh, I see it's just the... Uh, got crapped out a little bit from my camera being too high or too low. Let's see if I can point up a little bit higher. I just need to adjust that a little bit so you see more of the painting. Probably should have just left it alone, but... There we go. never get it square again, but that's okay. I'm probably just going to put it right back where it was. Okay, well. <laughs> yep, it's if I want it square, it's going to get cropped off. It's because my, my camera is drooping a little bit. I think that's what's happened. Sorry about this. <laughs> They get a little bit of idea of what I go through to get the setup to look right. Okay. Okay, I give up. It's just going to be off. her whole head now. Eventually I'll screw this whole thing up. So that I'm too high or too low? I think I'm too high. That's the... I've been pushing it the wrong way. Okay. I'll be back in a second, folks, <laughs> while I fix my camera. Okay, I bet everyone's thrown up now, so, and it actually looks pretty good. Thank you for bearing with me and my ridiculous need for perfection. Right about there. Let's just scooch the pellet over and call it a day. Okay, I'm back. Um, and I didn't lose anybody, I don't think. Okay, so that was my little five minute um, intermission there. So let's get back to painting. You can see a little bit more of that. You can see in the, in the video, in the stream, the, the top of the hat looks like it's at the very top of the painting, but there is just a little bit of space above that, which is fine. It's just all fine. 
just throw in a little bit of wash on the top. I don't know what color that's going to be, but um, just going to try to put in a little bit of this hat design, which is some colored stripes. Got like a blue stripe and a lighter blue stripe. some reds and oranges. Okay. I will get a little bit more detailed at some point there, but I just kind of want to get where it is. This is pink here. And then somewhere it says love first. I'm not going to um, I'll letter that in, but I'm just going to indicate where where it is. I just wiped out my design, but that's okay. The top of her hat was too high and it was throwing off some of my drawing. So glad I was able to fix that reasonably. From the casual observer, it would seem that I have no idea what I'm doing. But I assure you <laughs> that I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's not completely true, but each painting I just kind of feel like I'm winging it. brought that hat down quite a bit because I think that was part of what was throwing me off a little bit. Which means also other edges down here are a little bit off. Okay, I have to put some more white on my palette soon because I've been just blowing through the white pretty much.
that's where I'm running out of white. So, um, at least uh, where I'm running out of clean white that's on my palette. So the white that I use is a um, either I use a titanium white or I use um, something called uh, radiant white. Well, I think that's the name of it. Radiant white. Well, titanium white in this case. Radiant white is uh, like titanium white, but it uses safflower oil as a mixture as the binder in the paint instead of linseed oil, which gives it a much uh, cooler appearance. And uh, so if you're trying to get a very um, cool and bright uh, effect, then you might think about that um, radiant white. Just need some really clean white right here to mix into what's already down. get the angle of that jaw right, which has been plaguing me throughout this painting. I do want a little bit of yellow influence in here. It's a little bit too much. Yeah, getting the angle of this chin has been really a uh, tough one for me. starting to look right. Yep, I needed this to be a little braver about coming in tighter with that cheek there. That's feeling better. Which means the forehead also, I have to come in a little bit more. feeling a little bit better. Okay, and this is where I was talking about trying to get that um, reflectiveness in the eye that I still have to go a little bit darker 
in the white of the eye to get that to make her iris a little bit bigger. Okay, get that um, phthalo blue going here. goes darker at the top just a little bit okay that's looking better let's pull the white of that eye it needs to be a little bit bigger here so I can pull the corner out a little bit I think I need a little bit smaller brush here because I'm really struggling to get the control that I need. Okay, that's better. pupil is pretty close to this side with a little bit of you can see just a touch of color on the far edge something like that yeah <laughs> and then it bends around here That's looking a little bit better. And so then I want that hit of white so that you feel the reflection in the eye. That was a little bit too strong. I'm going to cut it off there. start to s start to see it a little bit more like it's moving in space and I totally lost her upper eyelid let's see if we can get that back Starting to feel the form a little bit more.
and I'm just going to blast a little bit of yellow or something in there just to feel the light punching up underneath her eyebrow there. And then it gets a little bit softer.
me see. I'm about two hours in. I'm having fun just painting. Um, don't know about you guys how you're doing. Pretty quiet out there. Um, let me see. Um, B. Ramani says, hello, artist. Um, found you live. Okay, well, welcome. You guys are being quiet. I see there's 12 or so people watching, but you're happy to, you know, you're perfectly welcome to watch quietly. You can ask me questions if you want, but um, if you don't mind me just painting quietly, I'll just continue to do that. As I'm starting to feel my way around to find some of these forms that I'm seeing in here. Moving things back and forth in space until they start to look right. See if I get a little bit of green on that far edge of her cheek to help it um, turn a little bit more in space. That does help, but it's a little bit too strong. Okay, I got a little sloppy with the white of the eye there, so um, see if I can clean that up subtly.
I see Rishi's here. Hi, AJ, just dropping in to say hi from Atlanta. Great process on this one. Loving the colors. Cheers. All the best. Well, welcome, Rishi. Glad you can join in.
feeling like I'm almost there. I don't want to overwork it. And starting to feel the anatomy a little bit better. Need a little bit of a shadow purple. here above the brow without making it too too hard Getting there.
Just going to get a little more dark value underneath the chin there, just to get it to come forward a little bit more. In fact, I can just put a little bit of almost black accent right there, just to get it to separate. A little bit of lighter on this edge. That was a little bit too light. Okay, so I am going shooting to try to finish this by midnight because that really is my bedtime. I'll turn into a pumpkin and all that. So um, I like kind of the looseness around the edges, so I don't want to lose too much of that. Um, and just want to get make sure all the form is reading properly in the face um, and getting some of that the nice turns in there without it being overworked.
Okay, we're getting to about midnight, uh, about 10 minutes left, and I'm going to call it done when I get there. So, whatever I need to do in the next 10 minutes is, that's what needs to get done. So, if something jumps out at me is not like where I want it to be yet, I will um, get to that, but then after that I'm just going to say it's finished. Okay, really want to have this chin coming forward and then it receding back in space here. That's the only way it's going to look right. So I have to think about this is falling back into space and then it's pulling back behind. I have to adjust the hair a little bit so that I have a little bit of space to get that to feel like it is um, dropping away. bit of measurement here. Yeah, that looks about right. I need to make the gray a little bit darker behind her head just to support the light of that hat and just show you where that edge is. I got one little errant strand of hair back here. It's kind of interesting.
that's just about it. Um, I am going to sign this and then it's done and then it's happy tomorrow. I will post the finished painting to my Instagram account. Um, just wanted to mention if you um, encourage you to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. That way if the next time I do this you'll get a notification. Some place isn't dry enough I can just throw in a little signature. I think that's good enough. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining me. Hope you had a good time. Um, got a little quiet there towards the end. Sorry about that. Um, just was getting into the painting and uh, um, hope you got something out of it. And I will probably be here next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Um, hope you hope you can join me again and I will see you soon. Have a great night.